Welcome to TV5 and Mana TV. You are watching Insight with Praveen Puram. So today's our show is basically on change your story on your health, right? So in our busy life in this pandemic, so we are definitely struggling with our work life balance, family balance, and also health. So today we have an interesting guest. Mr. Sarvanan Balakrishnan, who is the founder of uh, uh, Amura, and he's also the CEO. Uh, welcome to the show, Sarvanan. How are you today? Hey, Praveen. Thank you very much. I'm doing fantastic. I usually am a night owl. I wake up uh, in the night time, and uh, 10 o'clock in the night is typically my prime time. That's when my prime time starts. So I can't ask for a better time for doing this interview than 9.30 in the night. Awesome. Thank, Thank you me. so much for coming on to the show. So I just wanted to explain today uh, what are we going to cover and what is the takeaway from this show. And uh, based on the health, how the health conditions on everyone are struggling with, we thought that we will bring some information how to transform your health. So we will be more talking about how to transform your health what is a good diet, exercise, and you know some of the aging factors, how you can keep yourself fit in this show. You can also ask questions after, after this show, and you can email me on my face. You can email me or uh, put a text on my Facebook so that we can connect to Sarvanan. Sarvanan is always uh, willing to help us uh, to this. So Sarvanan, um, uh, I would let you introduce more about yourself and uh, what this Amura does. And interestingly, I also found that Amura means it is like it came from the word Amrut and uh, the source of immortality. It's very, very interesting uh, name, um, Sarvanan. Thank you so much for again coming. I would let you introduce yourself. Thanks a lot. Um, uh, thanks a lot, Praveen. See, uh, I have a very unusual background. I'm an engineer and uh, been interested in a lot of things, done a lot of things in my life. Uh, eventually, it turned out that um, uh, my final calling took me to healthcare, and uh, this started off with a lot of, um, you know, I had some health setback in my life, in my family's life, and things like that, and uh, went on a wild goose chase all around the world looking for a solution. My son uh, ended up having, uh, to put it in a nutshell, my son ended up having super high triglycerides when he was just 10 years old. And uh, doctors wanted to put him on statins. Uh, me and my wife felt that that is not the right solution for a child 10, 10 years old. So um, we both felt that there should be somebody somewhere in the world who should know how to fix this uh, diabetes, you know, this uh, high triglyceride without uh, uh, placing a child on statin. So I started attending medical, international medical conferences. I'm an engineer. I started attending international medical conferences. This was like in 2007, 2008. And back then, I used to be the only Indian in those conferences. And I used to be the only non-doctor in those conferences. At the end of the conference, they would give me a certificate saying, Dr. Sarvanan Balakrishnan, I would give it back oh. to the master and to change it. <laughs> Fun. Uh, but eventually, you know, I came across some very forward-thinking doctors from US, from Germany and Australia and all that. And eventually, someone from Australia, I got to work with him very closely. He helped our son get rid of his triglyceride right, only using nutrition. By then, uh, and, and I was diabetic. I was also diagnosed as diabetic in 2007. And uh, I, as a free bonus, got my diabetes also reversed by him. This happened in 2008. And ever since I've been reading a lot of things about, you know, what, what the, the medical science, forgotten medical science of using nutrition as medicine. And uh, another uh, forward thinking futuristic medis medical science of extending our life um, to an extent that our parents have not even thought of. All these are uh, uh, the underground medical science of biohacking where you can, in, you can extend the capabilities of your body and mind. I always found all these things very fascinating. Eventually, uh, three years ago, I joined a friend of mine who's a medical doctor. He is my co-founder. He manages our patients. And we started uh, Amura. And uh, we wanted to... Well, we wanted Amura to be promise of super longevity for the people who go through our program. Super longevity is not what we are selling today. Today, what we are selling is, uh, today what we are offering is we are helping people to reverse chronic conditions like diabetes, hypertension, et cetera. But we hope as the technology progresses, we should be able to offer more and more things to people. That is what uh, we are today. Awesome. Uh, Amura is an online clinic. 
And as I told you that we help people reverse um, quite a few range of chronic diseases, almost about 200 different chronic diseases we address. That, that's the shortest of the version that I could get. What a fascinating story, uh, Sarvanan. I always feel that when people have a problem for themselves and they put their problem to others, you know, that, that any of the work, what you do will be successful. And similarly, I meet the people like you. Uh, yesterday, I was also talking to one of the uh, delivery or uh, software uh, manager or a leader who has been into transformed into a leadership training. So it is two different yeah. aspects Absolutely. and the same philosophy. He also read so many things and he came and today I'm speaking to you as an engineer, you are transformed into a complete different uh, line of business that is health. That is very, very interesting. And uh, I'm also, I wanted to tell to the viewers too, and I have also benefited myself. I think I have lost 28 pounds in record time, 40 days. That made me to bring you onto the show. And, uh, you know, already I inspired 10 people to my count. Wow. 10 people, I don't know, many will reach you in future, seeing this show and uh, seeing my transformation on the Facebook. And this is the way I want to help to the community to become healthy. And we are so lucky months, that, uh, yeah. Fine. Yeah. So basically, I wanted to uh, also request everyone so to utilize this opportunity, the pandemic time, you have a lot of time to take care of your health, focus on your diet and all. So what is your, uh, see today we have a lot of things like keto diet, you have a number of diets. So personally, I'm also confused. So finally, one of my good friend introduced you there without any uh, research, I came and I joined your online clinic and today I see the results, right? So tell our viewers, uh, what is the difference from apart from the other diets, it may be intermittent fasting, it may be keto diet or whatever the diet. How are you different? Personally, I am happy with your diet, but again, I want to listen from you to the viewers. Yeah, definitely. Uh, see, we have a lot of unconventional ways and um, uh, we are not unconventional just because we want to be unconventional. I tell you, let me start with this. The entire diet program, the entire world believes that food is medicine. You know, that is something that we've been given from uh, what's Hippocrates. We've been given this for, for, uh, from the Greeks uh, that we all believe that food is medicine and we always keep thinking, what should I add to my diet so my diabetes goes away? What should I add to my diet so that my habitation goes away? But we realize out of our own practice and the research that we have done, a lot of things that we do are based on science, but the, since we are dealing with large number of patients and then we approach this very, very systematically, we colored a lot of insights, data insights that defy the convention. What we find is the question is not about what you can add to your diet. The question is what you must remove from your diet. <clears throat> that is question number one that all of us should ask. Food we find is not medicine. Food we find is the first poison. Wow. So what do I mean by that is the first thing that gets an opportunity to destroy your health is going into your mouth three, four, five times every day, day after day, like what 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 100,000 times you have been putting something in your mouth from the time you're born. And in case if they have some potential to cause you harm, they definitely will over a period of time they accumulate. So the first thing that we believe is food is the first poison. So when everyone comes, it's, see, the poison is not the same for everyone, right? Somebody who might eat uh, wheat, for example, could be very comfortable for them. And for someone else, wheat would be a poison. For most of the people, rice is a good food. But there are, there are always, we come across people for whom rice is allergic. They can't eat rice. And uh, there are people who can't eat papaya. Papaya is considered to be very, very good food. And there are people who cannot eat um, uh, a whole lot of things, spinach and things like that. So the poison varies from person to person. The first thing that we do when people come to our clinic is to find out over a period of two months time, we systematically work with them to find out what food items don't agree with their constitution and remove it. That alone makes tremendous amount of change. Uh, uh, I mean, if, if you want to leave your readers with one tip, it is that. Find out the food item that do not agree with your constitution and remove it mercilessly. 
it is not difficult you just got to be methodical how you do there is something called elimination diet if you go to google look for elimination diet they'll tell you what you need to do is you need to methodically eat one food item every day every day every day every day not mix and match at the end of one and a half to three months time you would have attempted all the food item that you have um, you know that you usually consume and in that you would know that these are good these are bad that kind of a thing you'll be able to pick up plenty of information is available on elimination diet on uh, on the internet so identify food items that are bad for you and remove it that is something that we that our attitude that food is medicine sorry food is a first poison is the first way we are different and the second way that we are different is this should be a common knowledge everywhere unfortunately it's also not there is a condition called insulin resistance now insulin resistance is a condition you know where um, you you become insulin resistant then after some time insulin resistance becomes pre diabetes and after some time pre diabetes becomes diabetes now some of the people from insulin resistance they take a different route they get pre hypertension and then they get hypertension full blown hypertension so insulin resistance is the reason for high cholesterol hypertension diabetes and also somebody with insulin resistance have about 20 25 times higher chances of getting cancer insulin resistance also increases the chance of getting alzheimer and it see it's, it creates whole lot of problems right all modern problem that we are talking about most of them they boil down to insulin resistance 90% of the adult population all over the world today is insulin resistant okay 90% of the adult population today if you look at kids who are just out of the college people in their 20s everybody in 20s and 25 30 more than 40% of these people are insulin resistant mm-hmm. now you become insulin resistant for a simple reason just because you eat too much exactly so the amount of food that we are eating see this is a funny irony you know you look at environmental damages and this and that and all there you know we 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 run into amazon forest destroy the forest in order to cultivate more things on the other hand there are uh, un is about how are we go- how we are go- facing food scarcity in few years time we are not going to have enough food to feed the population when the population increases enough but we are all eating at least 30% more food than what is healthy for us okay so we are actually on one hand eating ourselves to death on the other hand the entire civilization is hurtling towards um uh hunger as a crazy situation all we got to do is you know you got a lot of money that is being put into agriculture because we are facing hunger and that there is another cri- and and environmental thing there is another crisis and it it another crisis is healthcare crisis all of them will be substantially dealt with if we start eating much lesser uh you can't change the entire world but you can change yourself if you are the listener so that is second thing that i would like to tell people identify the food item that you can't eat one number two is bring down the amount of food that you are eating you know that's what people do with intermittent fasting right they skip breakfast once they skip breakfast then the amount of calorie that you are taking will come down from 2500 calories to about 1800 calories or so that is usually sufficient for you to sustain and keep yourself comfortable and now that because you don't have to eat breakfast you get to save some time also and there are people who don't eat breakfast and don't eat lunch also you typically get additional 2 hours of uh, productive time and a lot of us who live busy life that is a god sent so these are two things that i can leave with your visitor leave leave for your visitors uh, pravin very easy to implement eat much less than what you're eating that is sufficient don't be scared you will not die of hunger you will be actually feeling much more productive when you're eating less than what you're eating right now and also in a world where 90% of the people are sick of sick because of their overfeeding 90% of the people are fatter than what they should be should be now people like praveen and myself who are thin we do look malnourished but actually this is the healthy standard and that is what you should be desired exactly yeah. exactly yeah. so you you said some interesting facts 30% we eat more right and also there is a wastage even we waste a lot of food and not about that there's a wastage yeah fantastic wastage. yeah so this is all together another topic where you can really feed the public who do not have sufficient funds or something that's a really interesting story what you have told me so now people once i get into your program and see the diet what we eat in a, a very small chunk 
and also eat healthy food and what will happen next how do you manage afterwards after you are let's say my goal is to reduce some weight and you know reverse my reverse my bp or reverse my um, diabetic or it's whatever it is diabetes, then what will be next yeah. so it's like this no if you are overweight which i told you 90% of the people are overweight 90% of the people are insulin resistant that means 90% of people are carrying more weight when you carry a lot of weight you become insulin resistant and insulin resistance also leads to pcod that is something that i forgot to say pcod also is a manifestation of insulin resistance uh, insulin resistance is a funny thing what it does is it increases a male hormone in women so mm-hmm. women become more like men it, it 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 and in men it increases a female hormone so men become more like you know they lose virility and things like that right so so i would say that insulin resistance in a way in an ironical way that is an equalizer and it messes up with the reproductive system right in both female reproductive system and male reproductive system it messes up that's whole lot of other thing it's just not what it okay anyway uh, that's my favorite villain uh, to answer your question uh, while you are peeling off the excess weight that you have accumulated you go through a particular phase in which you need to produce a lot of negative um calorie you need to introduce a lot of calorie deficit and you need to be mindful of various things you know that's sort of very complex bit complex thing so once you reduce your weight and bring it down to a point where you are not insulin resistant then at that point in time all you got to do is eat about 2/3 of what is considered to be a basal metabolic rate mm-hmm. 2/3 is very approximate and then you don't have to be very strict about it two things you need to do one is that you try and compress the feeding window which is what is intermittent fasting that's sort of become very popular and uh, second thing is you t- reduce the total amount of food that you are eating to about two third of what you are eating and if it is too less your body will say it's too less you can go back and eat it and also try and reduce the amount of carbohydrate that you are taking as much as possible that's the third thing that needs to be done so the thing that we don't know about carbohydrate is that see you know, there are three types of macro nutrients the nutrients from which you get the food are called macro the energy is called ma- or macro nutrients the fat is a macro nutrient protein is a macro nutrient and the carbohydrate is a macro nutrient there are something called essential fats so what does it mean is that essential fat cannot be made by the body you need to necessarily consume it so you need to eat that otherwise body will become deficient body needs it but body cannot make it that is called an essential fat you need to consume it then there are something called essential amino acids amino acids are building blocks of protein so these are these amino acids body need this amino acid but body cannot produce it so you need to necessarily eat it if you don't eat it you will become deficient there are no essential carbohydrates whatever carbohydrate that body needs it can produce it internally the only carbohydrate body needs is glucose mm-hmm. and liver can produce all the glucose it need and more okay so you do not need to eat carbohydrate to survive carbohydrate has got certain advantages advantage number 1 is that most of the it's it's all animal pro, all animal source food items will have fat and protein they won't have carbohydrate so mm-hmm. if there is if you are a vegetarian you are a vegan you will have to necessarily eat carbohydrate right so Uh, that's that could be for your ethical reason it could be for your religious reason it could be for a traditional reason or it could be for whatever belief that you have uh, so that's an ad- first advantage of carbohydrate and the second advantage of carbohydrate is small some small subset of people cannot handle animal products cannot eat animal products right this is very common in south asia mm-hmm. we find we, we do not have enough stomach acid to digest protein so lot of us can't handle animal products as well as caucasians can handle it so that's the second advantage of carbohydrate the third advantage of carbohydrate is that it is cheap <laughs> and because it's cheap we we tend to find it everywhere and the fourth advantage of carbohydrate that it has enormously long shelf life okay with relatively small amount of processing you can take a bag of paddy and then you can leave it there for a year or two nothing will happen but you cannot take a bowl of butter and leave it for even a week without putting it in the fridge or processing it stabilizing so on and so forth our protein our animal animal meat anything right so the animal source food items which are essentially protein and fat they can't be stored for a long time and you need cold chain this that and all the for transporting so that further increases the cost 
um, and and there is another spin off from the fact that uh, carbohydrate has a long shelf life the spin off is because these products have long shelf life you can make it in one part of the world and then you can distribute it all over exactly. so carbohydrate is the staple on which big food billion dollar food companies run Mm -hmm. billion dollar food companies cannot build, build themselves on top of you know if you look at uh, who makes meat industry meat industry there is no coca cola pepsi cola in meat industry dairy yeah the entire country netherlands makes dairy but who is that you know is there a large company which makes it, makes dairy no there is no large company which does it that is a very nature of food items so all food politics all dirty food politics vested interests everything comes i wouldn't say everything that is uh, too much of a blanket thing most of it comes from a uh, business that sells carbohydrate rich diet that's another reason why we keep eating so much and funnily the current vegan movement is started as a religious movement by seventh day adventists in australia Mm -hmm. and uh, so there is so much of vested interest in the food, food politics uh, uh, pravi um, you know it, it's a minefield to find out what is actually the correct wisdom and what is incorrect wisdom so there you you have so much of wrong information that has come from uh, hereditary i mean that that's come from our history and there's so much of information, wrong information that's come from scientific findings there is so much of wrong information that planted by the vested interest uh, it, it it's it's a mess out there sorry where were we <laughs> we were talking about <laughs> food food items yeah, yeah i will definitely you spoke about insulin resistant right as yeah. an individual how do i ensure my insulin resistant is correct or not is there any way we can judge yeah yeah actually it's very easy to find out if you are insulin resistant or not see i need to tell you what insulin resistance also is a very very useful information if somebody wants to carry one scientific information from this talk is that and your doctor is not going to tell you this this is scientific this is you you have papers unfortunately you don't get this information so what typically happens is uh, we are all programmed to eat more than what we need for the next 4 hours right so i eat today and i know that i going to get my food in the 4 hours time but then we are all programmed to eat as much as we can on every diet that we do because for hundreds of millions of years all of us our animals you know our ancestors every one of us we never knew where the next meal would come from so whenever we got a meal we went out to hunt we went out to forage whenever we got a meal we ate as much as we wanted and the excess food was converted as fat and stored when we were hungry the body dipped into the fat reserves and it used it when we hit a famine body dipped into the fat reserve and used it when it became winter and there was no food available body dipped into the fat reserves and used it right this mechanism worked very well till this time about 50 years ago we all became super good at beating nature and we bet hunger forever <laughs> so nowadays our body never gets into taking money out of take, taking the fat out of the uh, fixed deposit right and we never used get to use the fat so we always keep putting money in the fixed deposit at one point in time the vault in which we put everything it starts overflowing so what it means is at one point in time you keep putting your fat excess fuel into the fat cell at one point in time the fat cell becomes full the moment the fat cell becomes full uh, i'm just dramatizing this right for us to understand this easier the moment your fat cells become full the next meal that you're going to have the excess fuel in the next meal it doesn't have a place to go and sit when it doesn't have a place to go and sit the next the fuel in the next meal is left standard in the blood okay so we have two types of fuel like you have diesel and petrol for the vehicle you have fatty acid that is one type of fuel and then you have um uh, you you have carbohydrate that's another type of fuel let's say fatty acid like is is like diesel and carbohydrate is like petrol mm -hmm. um so if you have too much of fatty acid left in your blood we call it high cholesterol if okay. you have too much of carbohydrate left in the blood we call it diabetes right these are definition of the diseases but what happens with insulin resistance is when there is too much of carbohydrate or glucose in the blood body starts to panic okay because glucose when it is sitting in the blood vessels it can uh, stick to the proteins and destroy the protein molecules the way, the word for it is glycation 
like how when oxygen mixes up with carbon it can destroy the oxygen by creating carbon dioxide mm -hmm. when glucose mixed with protein it changes the molecule our body is made of a lot of protein molecules it changes the molecule the molecule cannot do the job anymore whatever its intended job the molecule can't do anymore so this process is called glycation and glycation is the reason why you get all the diabetic complications right the protein in the kidneys and the eyes and all are destroyed so with diabetes over a period of 10 15 years then we end up with all this complication body doesn't want this complication so what the body does is it sends out a hormone called insulin so whenever there is rise of glucose in the body in the blood body also sends out a hormone called insulin insulin's job is to go to each other cell knock on the door and say hey i got this glucose why don't you guys open the door take it and put it inside and normally this functions well insulin comes and gives a command and cells open the door take out the glucose put it inside and insulin goes to the next one next one. yeah it goes on but then if the cells are already full of glucose then what happens is when insulin comes and knocks on the door the cell says hey i don't want any more glucose i'm already full <laughs> so insulin gives a command and the glucose resists the command given to them the cells are resisting the command given to them by the uh, insulin hormone so this is called insulin resistance so insulin wow. resistance is a condition where the cells have become full right and then what the body does is to compensate for it it produces even more insulin right and all that so if you know that insulin resistance is a condition which says that your fat cells are full right some people have very few amount of fat cells in their body like myself i have very little fat cells in my in my body some people like sumer wrestlers have a lot of fat cell in their body people who have a lot of fat cell in the body can carry a lot of mass and they will not become insulin resistant people like myself even if we carry little bit of excess fat we will become insulin we become insulin resistant okay now body fills up the fat under the skin first mm -hmm. that is called subcutaneous fat mm -hmm. right let's also call it body fat then after it is filled the subcutaneous fat then it starts filling the fat in the abdomen that's okay. called visceral fat after it's finished after it sort of filled up the fat in the abdomen then it starts filling the fat it doesn't have any other place to put the fat it will put in the liver it will get fatty liver it will put some fat in pancreas it will get fatty pancreas it will put some fat in in the blood itself and you get cholesterol you know these kind of things happen so um the um so so if you see that you are beginning to grow a tummy that means that your subcutaneous fat quota is filled up and you are becoming insulin resistant so the easiest way for you to find out if you are insulin resistant or not is to see if you have a tummy if you have a tummy you are insulin resistant so mm -hmm. the way to reverse insulin resistance is lose so much of weight that your tummy goes away very simple unfortunately women who have delivered a baby cannot use this thumb rule because they their abdominal muscles would be so weak they can't say you know they, they their abdomen would be larger even after they have delivered the baby very often this happens so they can't tell whether it's a loose muscle or it's a fat that is sitting there mm -hmm. the correct way to find out if somebody is insulin resistant is to go and measure their fasting insulin if the fasting insulin is about less than 5 they are not insulin resistant if it's more than 5 it's insulin resistant that's a thumb rule and then there is also an insulin resistance index called homo ir i'll mm -hmm. tell you it's a simple formula you take the fasting insulin value and then you take a fasting glucose value in milligram per deciliter multiply these these two things and divide by 405 if the number is more than 1 you are insulin resistant if the number is less than 1 you are insulin sensitive wow that's so easy so yeah so you just get these things and uh, that'll tell you easily and these tests are in india they are like few hundred or few hundred rupees in i think in us is about 20 dollar test and if you find you are insulin resistant at quite early time then you can easily reverse it in matter of few weeks you can reverse it awesome awesome zarunan so next topic i would touch upon i interesting facts is like you know 4 million people die because of their blood sugar control every year exactly and 18 yeah. million on the heart attack and uh, basically yeah. if you see our exactly. uh, asian population are especially indians are prone for heart attack right so and also they are diabetic these days and hypertension if you are a software engineer so what would you suggest them from keeping them in view what should be their uh, health transformation starting today if anyone is seeing this um, um, 
uh, interview, I want them to think through what they have to do next. Yeah. So first thing I want our people to know is that the healthy BMI, you know, there's a BMI which says for this height, you have to have this weight and all that, right? Mm -hmm. The BMI is statistics. So what do I mean by that is that, uh, let's say that if you're an Indian male, you, you are supposed to be five foot seven inches. If you are a Indian or five foot six, I think. If you're an Indian female, you are supposed to be average height of one, five foot in, one. I have a niece who's like six feet tall. Um, so, uh, so what it means is while it is true that uh, every, you know, on an average five foot one is what you should expect for an Indian woman. There are always Indian women who are short. I think it's five foot two, not sure. There are always Indian women who are shorter than that. There are always Indian women who are taller than that. So that is the nature of statistics and BMI also is a statistics. BMI says that if you are, BMI is between 20 and 25, you are healthy. But that is not true for everyone. Uh, you need to find out if you're insulin resistant and you need to bring your weight down to a point where you're not insulin resistant. That is the only thing that most of the people who need to do. Even if you're in a sitting job, even if you're not having time to exercise, blah, blah, blah. All that is fine, right? If you do exercise, it's fantastic. If you keep yourself physically fit, that's fantastic. That will add another 10, 15 years to your life. But one thing that you should know, do is to keep your insulin resistance low. Keep yourself insulin sensitive. That's the only one thing that you need to do. Lose weight, become insulin, remain insulin sensitive. I, I think that's the only uh, tip that I have for all the software engineers who are sitting there and not doing anything. I should probably not be telling this to the TV. I haven't exercised in the last three years. You know, ever since we started Amara, I stopped going to the gym. I lost all my muscle tone and all that. But interestingly, my HbA1c has gone down, meaning which I become more insulin sensitive now because I've lost a lot of weight in order to adjust for not doing exercise. I've been telling uh, that you know I should start the exercise very soon, and I've also taken a six-pack challenge with some of my clients. That you know wow. whoever gets it, there, there is a friend; he's become a good friend. Uh, there is a friend of mine. Uh, I told him that if he gets a six-pack first, then I would get him a meeting with Rajinikant. He's a Rajinikant fan. And uh, he's also a Silicon Valley entrepreneur. And I told him, if I get the six pack first, he has to get me a meeting with Elon Musk. Wow. So we <laughs> take a challenge. Let's see whether he's working on it. I'm not working on it. Let's see. I think Rajnikanth is easy, maybe, if you know. <laughs> yeah, so I... <laughs> no, but he's large enough that even Rajnikanth will come and meet him. So awesome. my job is going to be easier. But anyway... Awesome, uh, Saruna. And if I see you, I can make it out how efficiently you're managing your health. And uh, when it comes to uh, me uh, now ensuring that my weight is, I lost weight and, you know, how the comfort I feel, I cannot tell you. So definitely everyone should uh, start practicing this and keep your levels under and periodically check your vitamins. So that is the next topic I'm going to ask you. Vitamins. In, in our whole life, if you see when the, if you are, go, you are leaning towards the Western culture and you started checking your health, health checkup, right? Every year, but still, what would be your suggestion to know on the vitals every year a person should check after 40 years? Okay, so what I'll do is I'll uh, share a list of things. Uh, we have a list of about 100 things that we would like our people to check, uh, uh, Praveen. After the call, I can share that. Uh, okay. Some of the things that you need to check is, uh, you know, you need to see if you are, see, we find, we used to check everybody for their vitamin levels. We eventually decided that it's useless to check for vitamin levels because everybody is deficient on vitamins. <laughs> we came across maybe like one in 500 people who had good vitamin levels, right? So we stopped checking vitamin levels for everybody. We know that everyone is going to be vitamin, vitamin deficient. Uh, see, the food that you're eating today is not the same food that people were eating 100 years ago. And 50 years ago, when we were, you know, the food nutritive value and all were designed, that was a different food, different carrot than the carrot that you're eating today. So you're not necessarily having the same vitamin A in the carrot that you get from your supermarket today. All along, food was always optimized for making money for the farmers, right? How beautiful it looks, how much of productivity, right? How large it turns out to be and how quickly you, know, you can grow the food Same. and how fast they can move on the supermarket. What is the, how could they extend the shelf life? Nobody, 
nobody ever optimize the food for its nutritive value right exactly nobody ever optimize the food for the nutritive value because we were not prepared to pay for the nutritive value of the food we always wanted glossy looking food we always wanted cheaper food we always wanted tastier food we never go to the shop and say hey i want to find a carrot which has got maximum amount of vitamin a we never did that right so obviously there's no incentive for the industry to do that so we are all vitamin deficient all kind of vitamin deficient so we don't even have to do any test i can tell you right away that you are vitamin deficient in yeah and you know vitamins are very very important not just vitamins you know you have a whole lot of other nutrients See, if you look at the body body is like a self assembling chemical factory Mm -hmm. or you can think of a house that builds itself right so in a house you have brick and mortar and steel and stone and uh, you know floor tiles you know uh, everything right your pipelines and wires and bulb and all that so these equivalent of that in your body are the nutrients now if you think of finding a mason to build a beautiful house you have a lovely blueprint you give uh, the mason everything but then you don't give him a door uh, frame at all what will happen is he would finish building the entire house and there won't be any doors at all in the house right mm-hmm. so then you won't be able to the house will be totally dysfunctional because you can't go from one room to other room exactly. that is what will happen if you do not have certain key nutrients in the body so exactly. you just got to keep your nutrition high and i have not uh, i i'm i'm personally convinced so that getting nutrients from food is a workable thing when you're young when your body Uh, is all new and it can assimilate the energy well and uh, you are also eating reasonably clean with organic food and things like that it's fine but uh, very very rarely i just seen one blood report uh, of thousands of people where somebody in their 60s had good vitamin levels wow 60s yeah 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 he's about 64 he was about 64 incidentally he's from andhra pradesh he's from hyderabad and he had excellent vitamin levels and the very interesting thing about him is that he was exceedingly aware of his body he had such a fantastic mind body connection he could easily intuit what is good for his body and eat exactly that and that has kept him healthy all through his life awesome if it's a very interesting thing when you look at the blood report like that you know very often when the husband and wife are very close to each other their blood reports are almost very similar whatever deficiency husband has the wife also has similar deficiency <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> you can look at the blood report and say, "Okay, this couple are close." <laughs> and uh, we find a lot of such very interesting things when we see that. Yeah. So um, exactly, I think you defined very, very clearly. You compared it to our body, to the house, and how the uh, you know the chemistry happens in our body as well. So in this ground, so selecting a vitamin when you are taking an external vitamin, so. do you think it's safe without any side effects because you talked about the vegetables we don't talk about nutri- nutritional vegetables but we speak about cheaper we speak about good looking we speak about uh, early yielding and you know you optimize the vegetables as you said so when you are choosing the vitamins what would be our caution what would you really look at one thing one thing that you need to be aware of is that at least in the us a lot of vitamins are uh, spurious product, spurious products even something that you get from uh, uh, supermarkets you know there, there is a lot of counterfeit products in uh, us if this counterfeit has not become so popular in india but in us it's sort of become very popular that is something that you need to be watchful of but other than that uh, see it's a very complex science also i don't think one should uh, you know freely go and take whatever vitamins that are available and start self administering themselves they can uh, that is why they are over the counter but i am little hesitant to say that hey you can do whatever you want and you know things like that uh, many things you see we have seen how powerful these things are um what um see uh we have we are at to have pro, we are at to see problem with you know too much of vitamin in somebody's body right i am not able to give you an answer but i have seen you know people who have suffered from depression for years together right these guys have been anti depressant for years together again and again and again unexplained depression no apparent reason life is fantastic but they are in depression give them right nutrients and two weeks they are off two weeks they are fine they are good as new mm-hmm. and magnesium is one such nutrient that can really destroy your mental health if it is deficient b complex is another thing that can that has impact on so many uh, activities in the body zinc is another thing that has impact on a lot of activities in the body when these things are and and like this there are a whole lot of other things coming when uh, they are deficient people can land up with a lot of uh, problems 
but i am unable to tell you what kind of caution that they should take precaution that they should take if they are going to self administer themselves one i can right away tell you that is that there are a lot of counterfeit products one need to watch out for it mm-hmm. other than that in terms of dosage and all i am not able to think of anything just avoid all fat so just be very mindful of fat soluble vitamins that's all i can tell excellent the reason i ask you this question sarunan because one uh, i recently came across with one of the phd person who has been researching on the immunity and also the vitamins so she was just giving an example of b complex as you said that b complex is a must the b family and the c are necessary for the body she says that you have to take every day and you should be cognizant about vitamins for example she said an example of b complex if you are taking a good b complex for example if you see a b complex if you take your urine is yellow right immediately you will see correct, the correct. result yeah. but she says yeah. it should be like you know the body absorbs the b complex and throws away the, the whatever the waste in that it should be periodical it should not be immediate so that means the body absorption should be good from the vitamins that's what she said that's why i asked you the question because most of us think whatever we get in the shelf it's good for us so i don't want to i don't want to take those on my own but again i need to take some assistance yeah there is a lot that. of politics on uh, vitamins uh, uh, c there are there are brands in the us which are frightfully expensive mm-hmm. and they say that hey it's because we are pure i too really think that you know what do you take with vitamin you take your you know raw vegetables you take broccoli you know, what do i take with vitamin i take my lettuce raw lettuce i take raw uh, broccoli and what are the impurities that go with it right? and uh, some of the supermarket brands uh, we have been eating it for last about 20 years time we are at to get cancer so i hope that's fine <laughs> that's supposed to be a joke <laughs> sorry yeah <laughs> so i think uh, we have covered uh, pretty much on that the other topic is age so yes, if sir. i see you i i can definitely uh, reverse at least 10 or 15 years from what you are right so <laughs> take off is there wish. any secret <laughs> <laughs> so what's the yeah, secret yeah see it's like this see i tell you what um it's a it's a, it's something that i've always been passionate about right that uh, delaying aging and reversing aging we are not at reversing aging we are we are but we are definitely at delaying aging already we have enough technology to tell us what is to be done now uh, see body has an internal program that runs that program we get it from our dna code right mm-hmm. and what the program does is as we are born we are born with you know as a helpless infant right with every passing year we become fitter and fitter and fitter our fitness increases with every passing year till such time you know you become 21 22 you become a strapping young man or a woman who can go on you know participate in olympic or maybe you know do bull fighting all the kind of stuff right if you compare an infant who is just born new neonatal and then you look at somebody who is that competent right all that magic was created by body right everything the body has a program it's done all that it's an achievement that we don't even begin to begin to compromise comprehend but then those things start shutting down one after other after you cross your reproductive age typically around 40 years so no those programs which were making you so first for about first 25 years body starts building you up step by step then after about 10 10 15 years time it remains constant then afterwards those programs which were making you stronger with time those things start shutting down one after other that is the chief driver of aging mm-hmm. we think that aging is wear and tear wear and tear is just one aspect and is not even an important aspect uh, um there are um there is ample evidence to say that we can extend the program for many 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 more years to come maybe like 10 times that or so uh, so if you look at uh, mouse like animals right same body size as mouse most animals live for about 2 3 years mm-hmm. but if you take bat that can live up live up to 30 years but somehow no bat has been able to extend its internal program to live much much longer and uh, so your job as a human being who's got the intellect who are not uh, you know who just doesn't have to do whatever uh, 
the nature has given you you can go more than you know uh, uh, what the nature has given you what you need to do is to find out the say the mechanisms in the body that are shutting down and see if we can provide it from outside there is a whole lot of stuff that is being done on that area and you will find a lot of longevity clinics in the us and many of your customers can look at it and probably even amura might start doing that in about a year's time or so right now we are we are very busy with uh, uh, helping people to get rid of their metabolic diseases and then we have also started working with people who have autoimmune conditions and we are doing that very successfully and uh, india is not ready for something like longevity science you know nobody comes to the comes in the door and say hey i want to look i know i want to at least function younger so maybe in a year's time we'll start doing that awesome i think thank you thank okay. you sir anand you have explained uh, very well now hopefully we'll also get in india and uh, the last question i would ask you is on the hair do you have any solutions on the hair so far what kind of solution you are talking about i mean the hair fall or Lo- uh, not losing hair, hair. hair growth hair. not losing hair unfortunately there's not much of solutions available uh, but uh, i'll i'll get you something in about 6 months time awesome so i told you that we are starting a longevity practice right and uh, in in one or two months time we'll start putting together the protocols for that and uh, we will put together the hair protocol first a lot of people have been asking about hair and we have not been able to do anything we can do something very marginal for hair but that is not what you are asking for what we can do is see there is there is a vitamin b3 mm-hmm. it's called niacin and what niacin does is it's it's a horrendous is a horrible vitamin to take it's harmless but then it gives you something called niacin flush and uh, there are vit- there are b3 which give you flush there are b3 which doesn't give you flush you need to get the b3 that gives you flush so what it means is that you know the moment you take it your skin will become reddish and then you'll start getting that itchy feeling and all that it lasts for about 1 2 hours time all this happens because the moment you take b3 it improves the blood circulation it opens up the capillary blood vessels and increases the blood circulation blood starts going to places or the parts of the body where it is not gone till now wow. and one of the places where blood goes is the scalp so what happens is because of the extra circulation the scalp uh, the, the the hair follicles get better nourished Mm-hmm. so immediately within 2 3 days time you'll find that uh, the hair fall reduces substantially b3 the flush is harmless but because it is very frightening uh, we don't recommend it we don't we don't prescribe it uh, personally uh, you know whenever so i occasionally you know i feel that a lot of my hair falls and things like that i take b3 that is the thing that really helps and of course other than that people take uh, uh, biotin personally i have not found biotin very uh, effective uh then of course uh, there are home remedies about you know uh, my wife has this preparation with uh, you know ayurvedic preparation that she swears by she has a very nice hair but typically amura style 100% effective solution give us about 6 months time i'll give you something we'll wait for that uh, sarunan and also we'll be in touch with your wife to get the oil or whatever the natural remedy you have <laughs> so we will try out it and uh, so uh, before we close the show uh, sarunan i wanted i wanted to ask what kind of diseases are the chronic diseases you have you can are from amura you can confidently say that you we can reverse it so far yeah yeah i can tell you uh, all the metabolic condition we can deal with it. metabolic mm-hmm. syndrome conditions which are your uh, hypertension high cholesterol uh, diabetes uh, type 2 diabetes right and uh, uh, then you have pcod uh, then you have uh, uh, then sleep apnea and to an extent uh, grt these are things right these are G- some people get grt because of excess weight we can reverse it right and getting people to lose weight getting people to lose weight we do phenomenally good job phenomenally good job it's i am not aware of any other clinic which is as effective as what we are doing and uh, we in fact have some doctors who are in our program who want to lose weight uh, doctors who specialize in weight loss clinic weight loss program they are in our program help asking us to help them lose weight and uh, so these are the things that that these are all metabolic diseases these are diseases of eating too much of food right so we are very effective in working on these things what and number two is a uh, certain amount of uh, uh, mental uh, health issues like depression and all that we can deal with them very effectively we can deal with depression particularly very effectively anxiety we can deal with it reasonably well so these are two areas that we can do 
and autoimmune conditions, whole lot of autoimmune conditions we can deal with effectively. Uh, migraine, we are very successful in dealing with migraine. Uh, and leaky gut is another autoimmune, you know, it's a source of autoimmune condition. Leaky gut also, we are very good, we have been very effective in handling. Thyroid deficiency, Hashimoto thyroid disease, we were very good at handling these things also. See, there are about 150 autoimmune diseases. We are able to get varying degree of results in each of the 150 autoimmune diseases. Now, some of them we are able to get full remission, some of them we are able to get part remission. Diabetes, hypertension, and all that, we can get full remission in case if it's less than 10 years old. But in case if the disease has been there for more than 10 years, we may not be able to get full remission. In some cases, we can get full remission. Some cases, we cannot get full remission. So these are some of the things that we are doing that I can immediately think of. But totally, we deal with like about some 200 different conditions. Wow. So even if the yeah. patients are, uh, if the age limit is like 70, still they, you can reverse the diabetic? More than 70? The first patient that we had, see, that's not the issue. The very first patient that we had was my mother, and she was 72. She had diabetes, she had hypertension, and she had rheumatoid arthritis also. We fixed mm -hmm. all of that, and that's three years ago. Even today, she's quite fine. Uh, age is not a problem. The problem is for how many years they have had this problem. If these problems have stayed there with them for more than 10, 15 years' time, we can only get partial remission. If the problems have been there for less than five, five to 10 years' time, definitely done deal. One year, two year, three year, no questions at all. In about three, four weeks time, we can take it off. Wow. I think probably next step is like, I'll, I'll also introduce my mother too. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah. I would love to, yeah. I think uh, one good thing about, I could see the results, uh, Sarvanan. Uh, that's why I'm very confident to host you here. And I'm confidently saying that my doctor was also shocked to see this. And she already started prescribing to, to the patients whom they, whom they ask her. She's meeting. Yeah, yeah okay. she's, she said that she's going to really refer your name. And I'm, if okay. you have any article, please let me know. There are 80,000 plus doctor association called API. I can recommend okay. because the doctor president is one of my good friends. So I can recommend to host that. And I'm, I'm very confident that we can do that. So definitely, it'll be our pleasure. It's a, it's, it's a, see, for the first time, we are bringing something from India. See, usually what happens is the U.S. does all this innovation. And some guy who was working for those companies, somebody who worked for Amazon, somebody who worked for Facebook, somebody who worked for this, that, and all, these guys say, I'm going to go to India and do a startup. They do that, right? Now, what we are doing is we are contemporary with similar kind of activities that are happening in the U.S. There are some companies who are doing the same thing as what we are doing. We are contemporary with them. And uh, we are iterating quite fast, right? So... Uh, and we have already substantial, like yourself, we have substantial amount of uh, our business comes from the US. Uh, so maybe, you know, we will, uh, instead of getting all this from US to India, maybe, you know, we'll export all of that from India to US. Let's wait and see. A guy can wish, you know. I wish I wish you great success there, uh, Sarunan. Thanks a lot. And we all can help you because end of the day, helping others in health is uh, nothing else we can help them. That is the greatest help I feel, at least suggesting. So in I'm, fact, I'm, I'm very happy, something. you know. I'm very happy. So, I, mean, I want to tell you something, right? So see, I think you're doing a tremendous amount of service. You know, you have seen how easy it is for you to recover your health, right? Yes. The reason you have not been able to do is that you did not have the right information. Exactly. We were able to provide you the right information. We were able to provide right information to one person by spending, let's say, half an hour, one hour, two hour, whatever that is, right? We've been able to provide the format in which we are disseminating correct information is one person at a time. The format in which you disseminate information to people is typically, uh, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of people at any given time or millions of people at any given time. And I think people like Praveen, people like Mana TV have got tremendous role to play. The world is suffering because they don't have the right information. People are dying because they are eating more than they should eat. They are eating the wrong kind of food. So I lost my father to heart attack. My father's father lost his father. My father lost his father to heart attack, right? Um, the way that I started becoming diabetic when I was just in my 30s, I would have probably had my heart attack, you know, gone the way that my ancestors went, but for the information that I managed to collect. You're doing a tremendous job in bringing this information, Praveen, and I wish you 
all the very best much more than you know the success that i would see i think you and people like yourself who carry reliable information to people by the millions definitely you have a tremendous role yeah i think thank you for that and uh, the the main show for this is only to help people and it's a giveaway there is no commercial anything for this show it's only i want to help people by seeing good people on my show they have to learn by this end of this show they have to learn something and go at least one point that's enough i am achieved so i am very sure that the way you explained people might have learned a lot of things from this show and especially believe me when i am walking on the roads they are surprised to see me they are asking all these questions i am not my wife is tired because when i am walking people are asking about me <laughs> and i am tired explaining all these things to them so that's why i thought i'll do a show at least 100 200 500 people will visit for sure they have already seen like 500 people have already seen that show is there at least 10 people if i would have make a change in their life that's it i am achieved apart from my day job i am doing this as a passion helping people fantastic fantastic i think it's got Thank a big role to play yeah sure. yes sir we will we will Thanks have multiple lot. we will have another sessions as well i know that your wife is a great nutrition and when i speak to her i feel so pleasant she explains very clearly what we need to eat if any recipe is not there she'll create one and give so that's <laughs> sort of a, a pleasant personality your wife too thanks to her and the doctor goodwin too i'll bring them one by one and you know share their definitely thoughts. i think they deserve yeah they deserve to be there and each one of us have a very different view you know my view is more uh, uh, i'm i'm more uh, on the impact of you know super longevity and things like that right i'm more on this i'm more a business guy and uh, and as i told you she's more about implementation right you know what should i eat today hey, all this is fine these are all theory but how do we actually implement it she's that and dr dr godwin is concerned you know he's he's the medical doctor in the team so uh, he is a medical brain so each one of us have a different uh, perspective uh, yes thank you thank you sarunan for your time and uh, any last message have... to the viewers before we close the show uh okay okay now this is a extremely important message i already told you several things you know if there is one message you got to carry you got to carry this right but if there is only one message you got to carry you got to carry this right is this everyone who is watching this show today is likely to live way past your 100 and you are likely to be physically fitter whatever your say level of fitness today you are likely to be physically fitter and mentally more capable by the time you reach 100 than you are today so if let's say that you are 50 today let's say you are 40 today 50 today don't plan your life as if you are going to live for next 10 or 20 years time and then you are going to roll over and die plan your life as if you are going to live for another 50 years from now that changes everything about your life that changes everything you can sit and think about it for years together now today it might look like hey living past 100 what am i talking about living past 100 and fitter than you know where i am today what am i talking about mark my word before 2025 this will become a common wisdom this will become a given like in 2015 if somebody came and told you hey we're going to go to mars it's like hey what are you talking about today you know that you're going to go to mars it's just a matter of time right now i'm telling you that we are all going to live past 100 in 2025 you will say yeah we are all going to live past 100 we just waiting for the technology to come along that is something that i want to leave you with thank so, you thanks a lot for thank organizing you. this wonderful conversation thank you so much for your time sir and uh, uh, we all will really live our our life with healthy and with your tips i i wish and i am i'm sure that everyone who is watching will think about it and start looking options what we can do better to live happily and healthy right so that's all thank that. you again um, that's all from this show today thank you viewers for all your time and uh, keep watching good shows in the insight with uh, pravin puram and uh, you know inspire yourself and uh, adopt good good things from this show thank you again Thank you.